country music, also known as country and western or simply country, and hillbilly music, is a genre of popular music that originated in the southern United States in the early 1920s. It takes its roots from genres such as American folk music especially Appalachian folk and western music and blues. Country music often consists of ballads and dance tunes with generally simple forms, folk lyrics, and harmonies mostly accompanied by string instruments such as banjos, electric and acoustic guitars, steel guitars such as pedal steels and dobros, and fiddles as well as harmonicas. Blues modes have been used extensively throughout its recorded history. According to Lindsay Starnes, the term country music gained popularity in the 1940s in preference to the earlier term hillbilly music. It came to encompass Western music, which evolved parallel to hillbilly music from similar roots, in the mid 20th century. In 2009 in the United States, country music was the most listened to rush hour radio genre during the evening commute, and second most popular in the morning commute. The term country music is used today to describe many styles and subgenres. The origins of country music are found in the folk music of working class Americans, who blended popular songs, Irish and Celtic fiddle tunes, traditional English ballads, cowboy songs, and the musical traditions of various groups of European immigrants. Topic. Origins Immigrants to the southern Appalachian Mountains of eastern North America brought the music and instruments of Europe along with them for nearly 300 years. Country music was introduced to the world as a southern phenomenon. Topic. Role of East Tennessee The U.S. Congress has formally recognized Bristol, Tennessee as the birthplace of country music, based on the historic Bristol recording sessions of 1927. Since 2014, the city has been home to the birthplace of Country Music Museum. Historians have also noted the influence of the less known Johnson City Sessions of 1928 and 1929, and the Knoxville Sessions of 1929 and 1930. In addition, the Mountain City Fiddlers Convention, held in 1925, helped to inspire modern country music. Before these, pioneer settlers, in the Great Smoky Mountains region, had developed a rich musical heritage. Topic. Generations The first generation emerged in the early 1920s, with Atlanta's music scene playing a major role in launching country's earliest recording artists. New York City record label OK Records began issuing hillbilly music records by Fiddlin' John Carson as early as 1923, followed by Columbia Records Series 15000D, Old Familiar Tunes, Samantha Bumgarner in 1924, and RCA Victor Records in 1927 with the first famous pioneers of the genre Jimmy Rogers and the first family of country music The Carter Family. Many. Hillbilly. Musicians, such as Cliff Carlisle, recorded blues songs throughout the 1920s. During the second generation 1930s to 1940s, radio became a popular source of entertainment, and barn dance shows featuring country music were started all over the South, as far north as Chicago, and as far west as California. The most important was the Grand Ole Opry, aired starting in 1925 by WSM in Nashville and continuing to the present day. During the 1930s and 1940s, cowboy songs, or western music, which had been recorded since the 1920s, were popularized by films made in Hollywood, many featuring the king of the singing cowboys, Gene Autry. Bob Wills was another country musician from the Lower Great Plains who had become very popular as the leader of a hot string band 
and who also appeared in Hollywood westerns. His mix of country and jazz, which started out as dance hall music, would become known as western swing. Wills was one of the first country musicians known to have added an electric guitar to his band, in 1938. Country musicians began recording Boogie in 1939, shortly after it had been played at Carnegie Hall, when Johnny Barfield recorded, Boogie Woogie. The third generation 1950s to 1960s started at the end of World War II with Mountaineer, string band music known as Bluegrass, which emerged when Bill Monroe, along with Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs were introduced by Roy Acuff at the Grand Ole Opry. Gospel music remained a popular component of country music. Another type of stripped down and raw music with a variety of moods and a basic ensemble of guitar, bass, dobro or steel guitar and later drums became popular, especially among poor whites in Texas and Oklahoma. It became known as honky tonk and had its roots in western swing and the ranchera music of Mexico and the border states. By the early 1950s a blend of western swing, country boogie, and honky-tonk was played by most country bands. Rockabilly was most popular with country fans in the 1950s, and 1956 could be called the year of rockabilly in country music, with Johnny Cash emerging as one of the most popular and enduring representatives of the rockabilly genre. Rockabilly was also a starting point for eventual rock and roll superstar Elvis Presley, who would return to his country roots near the end of his life. Beginning in the mid-1950s, and reaching its peak during the early 1960s, the Nashville Sound turned country music into a multi-million dollar industry centered in Nashville, Tennessee. Patsy Cline and Jim Reeves were two of the most broadly popular Nashville Sound artists, and their deaths in separate plane crashes in the early 1960s were a factor in the genre's decline. The late 1960s in American music produced a unique blend as a result of traditionalist backlash within separate genres. In the aftermath of the British invasion, many desired a return to the old values of rock and roll. At the same time there was a lack of enthusiasm in the country sector for Nashville produced music. What resulted was a crossbred genre known as country rock. Fourth generation 1970s to 1980s music included outlaw country with roots in the Bakersfield sound, and country pop with roots in the countrypolitan, folk music and soft rock. Between 1972 and 1975 singer, guitarist John Denver released a series of hugely successful songs blending country and folk rock musical styles. During the early 1980s country artists continued to see their records perform well on the pop charts. In 1980 a style of neo-country disco music was popularized. During the mid-1980s a group of new artists began to emerge who rejected the more polished country pop sound that had been prominent on radio and the charts in favor of more traditional back to basics. Production. This neo-traditional movement would dominate country music through the late 1980s and was typified by the likes of George Strait. Attempts to combine punk and country were pioneered by Jason and the Scorchers, and in the 1980s Southern Californian cowpunk scene with bands like the Long Riders and Mojo Nixon. During the fifth generation 1990s, country music became a worldwide phenomenon. Two types of artists enjoyed mainstream popularity, neo-traditionalists such as Alan Jackson, and the more broadly popular stadium country acts, in particular Garth Brooks. The Dixie Chicks became one of the most popular country bands in the 1990s and early 2000s. The sixth generation 2000s present has seen a certain amount of diversification in regard to country music styles. The influence of rock music in country has become more overt during the late 2000s and early 2010s. 
Most of the best selling country songs of this era were in the country pop genre, such as those by Lady Antebellum, Florida Georgia Line, Carrie Underwood, and Taylor Swift. Hip hop also made its mark on country music with the emergence of country rap. Topic History. Topic First Generation, 1920s. The first commercial recordings of what was considered instrumental music in the traditional country style were Arkansas Traveler and Turkey in the Straw by fiddlers Henry Gilliland and A. C. Eck Robertson on June 30, 1922, for Victor Records and released in April 1923. Columbia Records began issuing records with Hillbilly Music Series 15000D Old Familiar Tunes as early as 1924. The first commercial recording of what is widely considered to be the first country song featuring vocals and lyrics was Fiddlin' John Carson with Little Log Cabin in the Lane for OK Records in June 14, 1923. Vernon Dalhart was the first country singer to have a nationwide hit in May 1924 with Wreck of the Old 97. The flip side of the record was Lonesome Road Blues, which also became very popular. In April 1924, Aunt Samantha Bumgarner and Eva Davis became the first female musicians to record and release country songs. Many hillbilly musicians, such as Cliff Carlisle, recorded blues songs throughout the decade and into the 1930s. Other important early recording artists were Riley Puckett, Don Richardson, Fiddlin' John Carson, Uncle Dave Macon, Al Hopkins, Ernest V. Stoneman, Blind Alfred Reed, Charlie Poole and the North Carolina Ramblers and the Skillet Lickers. The steel guitar entered country music as early as 1922, when Jimmy Tarleton met famed Hawaiian guitarist Frank Ferreira on the West Coast. Jimmy Rogers and the Carter family are widely considered to be important early country musicians. From Scott County, Virginia, the Carters had learned sight reading of hymnals and sheet music using solfage. Their songs were first captured at a historic recording session in Bristol, Tennessee, on August 1, 1927, where Ralph Peer was the talent scout and sound recordist. A scene in the movie Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? depicts a similar occurrence in the same time frame. Rogers fused hillbilly country, gospel, jazz, blues, pop, cowboy, and folk, and many of his best songs were his compositions, including Blue Yodel, which sold over a million records and established Rogers as the premier singer of early country music. Beginning in 1927, and for the next 17 years, the Carters recorded some 300 old-time ballads, traditional tunes, country songs and gospel hymns, all representative of America's southeastern folklore and heritage. Topic. Second generation 1930s to 1940s. Record sales declined during the Great Depression, but radio became a popular source of entertainment, and barn dance shows featuring country music were started by radio stations all over the South, as far north as Chicago, and as far west as California. The most important was the Grand Ole Opry, aired starting in 1925 by WSM in Nashville and continuing to the present day. Some of the early stars on the Opry were Uncle Dave Macon, Roy Acuff and African-American harmonica player Defford Bailey. WSM's 50,000-watt signal in 1934 could often be heard across the country. Many musicians performed and recorded songs in any number of styles. Moon Mullican, for example, played western swing but also recorded songs that can be called rockabilly. Between 1947 and 1949, country crooner Eddie Arnold placed eight songs in the top ten. From 1945 to 1955 Jenny Lou Carson was one of the most prolific songwriters in country music.
Topic: <laughs> Singing Cowboys and Western Swing. In the 1930s and 1940s, cowboy songs, or Western music, which had been recorded since the 1920s, were popularized by films made in Hollywood. Some of the popular singing cowboys from the era were Gene Autry, the Sons of the Pioneers, and Roy Rogers. Country music and Western music were frequently played together on the same radio stations, hence the term country and Western music. Cowgirls contributed to the sound in various family groups. Patsy Montana opened the door for female artists with her history-making song, I Want to Be a Cowboy's Sweetheart. This would begin a movement toward opportunities for women to have successful solo careers. Bob Wills was another country musician from the Lower Great Plains who had become very popular as the leader of a hot string band and who also appeared in Hollywood westerns. His mix of country and jazz, which started out as dance hall music, would become known as western swing. Cliff Bruner, Moon Mullican, Milton Brown and Adolf Hoffner were other early western swing pioneers. Spade Cooley and Tex Williams also had very popular bands and appeared in films. At its height, Western swing rivaled the popularity of big band swing music. Topic. Changing instrumentation Drums were scorned by early country musicians as being too loud and not pure. But by 1935 Western Swing big band leader Bob Wills had added drums to the Texas Playboys. In the mid-1940s, the Grand Ole Opry did not want the Playboys drummer to appear on stage. Although drums were commonly used by rockabilly groups by 1955, the less conservative than the Grand Ole Opry Louisiana Hayride kept its infrequently used drummer backstage as late as 1956. By the early 1960s, however, it was rare that a country band didn't have a drummer. Bob Wills was one of the first country musicians known to have added an electric guitar to his band, in 1938. A decade later, 1948, Arthur Smith achieved top 10 U.S. country chart success with his MGM Records recording of Guitar Boogie, which crossed over to the U.S. pop chart, introducing many people to the potential of the electric guitar. For several decades Nashville session players preferred the warm tones of the Gibson and Gretsch archtop electrics, but a hot Fender style, using guitars which became available beginning in the early 1950s, eventually prevailed as the signature guitar sound of country. Topic. Hillbilly Boogie Country musicians began recording Boogie in 1939, shortly after it had been played at Carnegie Hall, when Johnny Barfield recorded. Boogie Woogie. The trickle of what was initially called Hillbilly Boogie, or Okie Boogie, later to be renamed Country Boogie, became a flood beginning in late 1945. One notable release from this period was the Delmore Brothers' Freight Train Boogie, considered to be part of the combined evolution of country music and blues towards rockabilly. In 1948, Arthur Guitar Boogie. Smith achieved top 10 U.S. country chart success with his MGM Records recordings of Guitar Boogie and Banjo Boogie, with the former crossing over to the U.S. pop charts. Other country boogie artists included Moon Mullican, Merrill Moore and Tennessee Ernie Ford. The hillbilly boogie period lasted into the 1950s and remains one of many subgenres of country into the 21st century. Topic: <inaudible> Bluegrass, folk and gospel. By the end of World War II, mountaineer 
String band music known as bluegrass had emerged when Bill Monroe joined with Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs, introduced by Roy Acuff at the Grand Ole Opry. That was the ordination of bluegrass music and how Bill Monroe became to be known as the father of country music. Gospel music, too, remained a popular component of bluegrass and other sorts of country music. Red Foley, the biggest country star following World War II, had one of the first million selling gospel hits, Peace in the Valley, and also sang boogie, blues and rockabilly. In the post-war period, country music was called folk in the trades, and hillbilly within the industry. In 1944, the Billboard replaced the term hillbilly with folk songs and blues and switched to country or country and western in 1949. Topic. Honky Tonk Another type of stripped-down and raw music with a variety of moods and a basic ensemble of guitar, bass, dobro or steel guitar and later, drums became popular, especially among poor whites in Texas and Oklahoma. It became known as Honky Tonk and had its roots in Western Swing and the ranchera music of Mexico and the border states, particularly Texas, together with the blues of the American South. Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys personified this music which has been described as a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, a little bit of black and a little bit of white, just loud enough to keep you from thinking too much and to go right on ordering the whiskey." East Texan Al Dexter had a hit with, "'Honky Tonk Blues' and seven years later, "'Pistol Packin' Mama." These, "'Honky Tonk' songs associated barrooms, were performed by the likes of Ernest Tubb, Kitty Wells, the first major female country solo singer, Ted Daffin, Floyd Tillman, and the Maddox brothers and Rose, Lefty Frizzle and Hank Williams, would later be called traditional country. Williams's influence in particular would prove to be enormous, inspiring many of the pioneers of rock and roll, such as Elvis Presley and Jerry Lee Lewis, as well as Chuck Berry and Ike Turner, while providing a framework for emerging honky-tonk talents like George Jones. Webb Pierce was the top-charting country artist of the 1950s, with 13 of his singles spending 113 weeks at number one. He charted 48 singles during the decade, 31 reached the top 10 and 26 reached the top 4. Topic: Third Generation, 1950s to 1960s. By the early 1950s, a blend of western swing, country boogie, and honky-tonk was played by most country bands. Western music, influenced by the cowboy ballads and Tejano music rhythms of the southwestern U.S. and northern Mexico, reached its peak in popularity in the late 1950s, most notably with the song, El Paso, first recorded by Marty Robbins in September 1959. In 1953, the first all-country radio station was established in Lubbock, Texas. The country music scene largely kept the music of the folk revival and folk rock at a distance, despite the similarity in instrumentation and origins see, for instance, the birds' negative reception during their appearance on the Grand Ole Opry. The main concern was politics, the folk revival was largely driven by progressive activists, a stark contrast to the culturally conservative audiences of country music. Only a handful of folk artists, such as Burl Ives, John Denver and Canadian musician Gordon Lightfoot, would cross over into country music after the folk revival died out. During the mid-1950s a new style of country music became popular, eventually to be referred to as rockabilly. The music of the 1960s and 1970s targeted the American working class, and truckers in particular. 
As country radio became more popular, trucking songs like the 1963 hit song Six Days on the Road by Dave Dudley began to make up their own subgenre of country. These revamped songs sought to portray American truckers as a new folk hero, marking a significant shift in sound from earlier country music. The song was written by actual truckers and contained numerous references to the trucker culture of the time like ICC for Interstate Commerce Commission and Little White Pills as a reference to amphetamines. Starday Records in Nashville followed up on Dudley's initial success with the release of Give Me 40 Acres by the Willis Brothers. Topic. Rockabilly Rockabilly was most popular with country fans in the 1950s, and 1956 could be called the year of rockabilly in country music. Rockabilly was an early form of rock and roll, an upbeat combination of blues and country music. The number two, three and four songs on Billboard's charts for that year were Elvis Presley, Heartbreak Hotel. Johnny Cash, I Walk the Line, and Carl Perkins, Blue Suede Shoes. Thumper Jones, George Jones, Cash and Presley placed songs in the top five in 1958 with number three, Guess Things Happen That Way, Come In, Stranger, by Cash, and number five by Presley, Don't, I Beg of You. Presley acknowledged the influence of rhythm and blues artists and his style, saying, The colored folk been singing and playing it just the way I'm doing it now, man for more years than I know. Within a few years, many rockabilly musicians returned to a more mainstream style or had defined their own unique style. Country music gained national television exposure through Ozark Jubilee on ABC TV and radio from 1955 to 1960 from Springfield, Missouri. The program showcased top stars including several rockabilly artists, some from the Ozarks. As Webb Pierce put it in 1956, once upon a time, it was almost impossible to sell country music in a place like New York City. Nowadays, television takes us everywhere, and country music records and sheet music sell as well in large cities as anywhere else. The late 1950s saw the emergence of Buddy Holly, but by the end of the decade, backlash as well as traditional artists such as Ray Price, Marty Robbins, and Johnny Horton began to shift the industry away from the rock and roll influences of the mid-1950s. The Country Music Association was founded in 1958, in part because numerous country musicians were appalled by the increased influence of rock and roll on country music. Topic: The Nashville and Country Politan Sounds. Beginning in the mid-1950s, and reaching its peak during the early 1960s, the Nashville Sound turned country music into a multi-million dollar industry centered in Nashville, Tennessee. Under the direction of producers such as Chet Atkins, Bill Porter, Paul Cohen, Owen Bradley, Bob Ferguson, and later Billy Sherrill, the sound brought country music to a diverse audience and helped revive country as it emerged from a commercially fallow period. This subgenre was notable for borrowing from 1950s pop stylings, a prominent and smooth vocal, backed by a string section violins and other orchestral strings and vocal chorus. Instrumental soloing was de-emphasized in favor of trademark licks. Leading artists in this genre included Jim Reeves, Skeeter Davis, Connie Smith, The Browns, Patsy Cline, and Eddie Arnold. The slip note piano style of session musician Floyd Kramer was an important component of this style. The Nashville sound collapsed in mainstream popularity in 1964, a victim of both the British invasion and the deaths of Reeves and Klein in separate airplane crashes. 
By the mid 1960s, the genre had developed into countrypolitan. Countrypolitan was aimed straight at mainstream markets, and it sold well throughout the later 1960s into the early 1970s. Top artists included Tammy Winnett, Lynn Anderson, and Charlie Rich, as well as such former hard country artists as Ray Price and Marty Robbins. Despite the appeal of the Nashville sound, many traditional country artists emerged during this period and dominated the genre, Loretta Lynn, Merle Haggard, Buck Owens, Porter Wagoner, George Jones, and Sonny James among them. Topic. Country soul crossover In 1962, Ray Charles surprised the pop world by turning his attention to country and western music, topping the charts and rating number three for the year on Billboard's pop chart with the I Can't Stop Loving You single, and recording the landmark album Modern Sounds in Country and Western Music. Topic. Bakersfield Sound Another subgenre of country music grew out of hardcore honky tonk with elements of western swing and originated 112 miles 180 kilometers north northwest of Los Angeles in Bakersfield, California, where many Okies and other Dust Bowl migrants had settled. Influenced by one time West Coast residents Bob Wills and Lefty Frizzle, by 1966 it was known as the Bakersfield Sound. It relied on electric instruments and amplification, in particular the Telecaster electric guitar, more than other subgenres of the country music of the era, and it can be described as having a sharp, hard, driving, no frills, edgy flavor hard guitars and honky tonk harmonies. Leading practitioners of this style were Buck Owens, Merle Haggard, Tommy Collins, Gary Allen, and Wynn Stewart, each of whom had his own style. Ken Nelson, who had produced Owens and Haggard and Rose Maddox became interested in the trucking song subgenre following the success of Six Days on the Road and asked Red Simpson to record an album of trucking songs. Haggard's White Line Fever was also part of the trucking subgenre. Topic. Decline of Western music and the cowboy ballad By the late 1960s, Western music, in particular the cowboy ballad, was in decline. Relegated to the country and western genre by marketing agencies, popular Western recording stars released albums to only moderate success. Rock and roll artists got hit songs, but Western artists also got country hits. The latter was largely limited to Buck Owens, Merle Haggard, and a few other bands. In the process, country and Western music as a genre lost most of its Southwestern, ranchera, and Tejano musical influences. However the cowboy ballad and honky-tonk music would be resurrected and reinterpreted in the 1970s with the growth in popularity of outlaw country music from Texas and Oklahoma. Topic. Fourth generation 1970s to 1980s. Topic. Outlaw Country and Red Dirt Derived from the traditional Western and honky-tonk musical styles of the late 1950s and 1960s, including Ray Price whose band, the Cherokee Cowboys, included Willie Nelson and Roger Miller, and mixed with the anger of an alienated subculture of the nation during the period, Outlaw Country revolutionized the genre of country music. After I left Nashville, the early 70s, I wanted to relax and play the music that I wanted to play, and just stay around Texas, maybe Oklahoma. Waylon and I had that outlaw image going, and when it caught on at colleges and we started selling records, we were okay. 
the whole outlaw thing, it had nothing to do with the music, it was something that got written in an article, and the young people said, well, that's pretty cool, and started listening. Willie Nelson The term outlaw country is traditionally associated with Willie Nelson, Jerry Jeff Walker, Hank Williams Jr., Merle Haggard, Waylon Jennings, Joe Ely, Steve Young, David Allen Coe, John Prine, Billy Joe Shaver, Gary Stewart, Towns Van Zant, Chris Christopherson, Michael Martin Murphy, Tomple Glazer, Steve Earle, and the later career renaissance of Johnny Cash, with a few female vocalists such as Jesse Coulter, Sammy Smith, Tanya Tucker and Roseanne Cash. It was encapsulated in the 1976 album Wanted. The Outlaws. One stream of outlaw country music which emerged as subgenre in its own right was termed Red Dirt Music. Originating in the bars and honky tonks of Oklahoma and Texas, Red Dirt Music supplemented outlaw country's singer songwriter tradition with roots rock and punk rock influences. Topic. Country pop Country pop or soft pop, with roots in the countrypolitan sound, folk music, and soft rock, is a subgenre that first emerged in the 1970s. Although the term first referred to country music songs and artists that crossed over to Top 40 radio, country pop acts are now more likely to cross over to adult contemporary music. It started with pop music singers like Glenn Campbell, Bobby Gentry, John Denver, Olivia Newton-John, Anne Murray, B.J. Thomas, the Bellamy Brothers, and Linda Ronstadt having hits on the country charts. Between 1972 and 1975, singer-guitarist John Denver released a series of hugely successful songs blending country and folk rock musical styles. Rocky Mountain High. Sunshine on My Shoulders. Annie's Song. Thank God I'm a Country Boy. And I'm Sorry. And was named Country Music Entertainer of the Year in 1975. The year before, Olivia Newton John, an Australian pop singer, won the Best Female Country Vocal Performance as well as the Country Music Association's most coveted award for females, Female Vocalist of the Year. In response George Jones, Tammy Winnett, Jean Shepard and other traditional Nashville country artists dissatisfied with the new trend formed the short-lived Association of Country Entertainers. In 1974, the ace soon unraveled in the wake of Jones and Wynette's bitter divorce and Shepard's realization that most others in the industry lacked her passion for the movement. During the mid-1970s, Dolly Parton, a successful mainstream country artist since the late 1960s, mounted a high-profile campaign to cross over to pop music, culminating in her 1977 hit, Here You Come Again which topped the U.S. country singles chart, and also reached number three on the pop singles charts. Parton's male counterpart, Kenny Rogers, came from the opposite direction, aiming his music at the country charts. After a successful career in pop, rock and folk music with the first edition, achieving success the same year with Lucille which topped the country charts and reached number five on the U.S. pop singles charts, as well as reaching number one on the British all-genre chart. Parton and Rogers would both continue to have success on both country and pop charts simultaneously, well into the 1980s. Artists like Crystal Gale, Ronnie Millsap and Barbara Mandrell would also find success on the pop charts with their records. In 1975, author Paul Hemphill stated in the Saturday Evening Post, "...country music isn't really country anymore, it is a hybrid of nearly every form of popular music in America." During the early 1980s, country artists continued to see their records perform well on the pop charts. 
Willie Nelson and Juice Newton each had two songs in the top five of the Billboard Hot 100 in the early 80s. Nelson charted Always On My Mind, number 5, 1982, and To All the Girls I've Loved Before, No. 5, 1984, a duet with Julio Iglesias, and Newton achieved success with Queen of Hearts, number 2, 1981, and Angel of the Morning, number 4, 1981. Four country songs topped the Billboard Hot 100 in the 1980s, Lady by Kenny Rogers, From the Late Fall of 1980, 9 to 5 by Dolly Parton, I Love a Rainy Night by Eddie Rabbit, these two back-to-back -back at the top in early 1981, and Islands in the Stream, a duet by Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers in 1983, a pop country crossover hit written by Barry, Robin, and Maurice Gibb of the Bee Gees. Newton's Queen of Hearts almost reached number one, but was kept out of the spot by the pop ballad juggernaut Endless Love by Diana Ross and Lionel Richie. The move of country music toward neo-traditional styles led to a marked decline in country pop crossovers in the late 1980s, and only one song in that period, Roy Orbison's You Got It from 1989, made the top 10 of both the Billboard Hot Country Singles and Hot 100 charts, due largely to a revival of interest in Orbison after his sudden death. The only song with substantial country airplay to reach number one on the pop charts in the late 1980s was At This Moment by Billy Vera and the Beaters, an R&B song with slide guitar embellishment that appeared at number 42 on the country charts from minor crossover airplay. The record-setting, multi-platinum group Alabama was named Artist of the Decade for the 1980s by the Academy of Country Music. Topic country rock Country rock is a genre that started in the 1960s but became prominent in the 1970s. The late 1960s in American music produced a unique blend as a result of traditionalist backlash within separate genres. In the aftermath of the British invasion, many desired a return to the old values of rock and roll. At the same time there was a lack of enthusiasm in the country sector for Nashville-produced music. What resulted was a crossbred genre known as country rock. Early innovators in this new style of music in the 1960s and 1970s included Bob Dylan, who was the first to revert to country music with his 1967 album John Wesley Harding and even more so with that album's follow-up, Nashville Skyline, followed by Gene Clark, Clark's former band The Birds with Graham Parsons on Sweetheart of the Rodeo and its spin-off The Flying Burrito Brothers also featuring Graham Parsons, guitarist Clay Clarence White, Michael Nesmith, The Monkees and the First National Band, The Grateful Dead, Neil Young, Commander Cody, The Allman Brothers, The Marshall Tucker Band, Poco, Buffalo Springfield, and Eagles, among many, even the former folk music duo Ian and Sylvia, who formed Great Speckled Bird in 1969. The Eagles would become the most successful of these country rock acts, and their compilation album Their Greatest Hits (1971–1975) remains the second best-selling album of all time in the U.S. with 29 million copies sold. The Rolling Stones also got into the act with songs like Dead Flowers and a country version of Honky Tonk Women. Described by AllMusic as the father of country rock, Graham Parsons' work in the early 1970s was acclaimed for its purity and for his appreciation for aspects of traditional country music. Though his career was cut tragically short by his 1973 death, his legacy was carried on by his protege and duet partner Emmylou Harris. Harris would release her debut solo in 1975, an amalgamation of country, rock and roll, folk, blues and pop. Subsequent to the initial blending of the two polar opposite genres, other offspring soon resulted, including Southern Rock, Heartland Rock and in more recent years, Alternative Country. 
In the decades that followed, artists such as Juice Newton, Alabama, Hank Williams Jr. and, to an even greater extent, Hank Williams III, Gary Allen, Shania Twain, Brooks and Dunn, Faith Hill, Garth Brooks, Alan Jackson, Dwight Yoakam, Steve Earle, Dolly Parton, Roseanne Cash and Linda Ronstadt moved country further towards rock influence. Topic. Neo country. In 1980, a style of neo country disco music was popularized by the film Urban Cowboy, which also included more traditional songs such as "The Devil Went Down to Georgia" by the Charlie Daniels Band. It was during this time that a glut of pop country crossover artists began appearing on the country charts. Former pop stars Bill Medley of the Righteous Brothers, England Dan Seals of England Dan and John Ford Coley, Tom Jones, and Merrill Osmond, both alone and with some of his brothers. His younger sister Marie Osmond was already an established country star, all recorded significant country hits in the early 1980s. Sales in record stores rocketed to $250 million in 1981. By 1984, 900 radio stations began programming country or neo country pop full time. As with most sudden trends, however, by 1984 sales had dropped below 1979 figures. Topic. Truck driving country Truck driving country music is a genre of country music and is a fusion of honky-tonk, country rock and the Bakersfield sound. It has the tempo of country rock and the emotion of honky-tonk, and its lyrics focus on a truck driver's lifestyle. Truck driving country songs often deal with the profession of trucking and love. Well-known artists who sing truck driving country include Dave Dudley, Red Sovine, Dick Curlis, Red Simpson, Del Reeves, The Willis Brothers and Jerry Reed, with C.W. McCall and Cletus Maggard pseudonyms of Bill Fries and Jay Hoogley, respectively, being more humorous entries in the subgenre. Dudley is known as the father of truck driving country. Topic. Neo-traditionalist movement During the mid-1980s, a group of new artists began to emerge who rejected the more polished country pop sound that had been prominent on radio and the charts, in favor of more, traditional, back-to-basics production. Many of the artists during the latter half of the 1980s drew on traditional honky-tonk, bluegrass, folk and western swing. Artists who typified this sound included Travis Tritt, Reba McIntyre, George Strait, Keith Whitley, Alan Jackson, Ricky Skaggs, Patti Loveless, Kathy Matea, Randy Travis, Dwight Yoakam, and The Judds. Beginning in 1989, a confluence of events brought an unprecedented commercial boom to country music. The arrival of exceptionally talented artists coincided with new marketing strategies to engage fans, technology that more accurately tracked the popularity of country music, and a political and economic climate that focused attention on the genre. Garth Brooks' Friends in Low Places in particular attracted fans with his fusion of neo-traditionalist country and stadium rock. Other artists such as Brooks and Dunn Boot Scootin' Boogie also combined conventional country with slick, rock elements, while Lori Morgan, Mary Chapin Carpenter, and Kathy Matea updated neo-traditionalist styles. Topic Fifth Generation 1990s Country music was aided by the U.S. Federal Communications Commission's FCC Docket 80-90, which led to a significant expansion of FM radio in the 1980s by adding numerous higher-fidelity FM signals to rural and suburban areas. 
At this point, country music was mainly heard on rural AM radio stations. The expansion of FM was particularly helpful to country music, which migrated to FM from the AM band as AM became overcome by talk radio. The country music stations that stayed on AM developed the classic country format for the AM audience. At the same time, beautiful music stations already in rural areas began abandoning the format leading to its effective demise to adopt country music as well. This wider availability of country music led to producers seeking to polish their product for a wider audience. In 1990, Billboard, which had published a country music chart since the 1940s, changed the methodology it used to compile the chart, single sales were removed from the methodology, and only airplay on country radio determined a song's place on the chart. In the 1990s, country music became a worldwide phenomenon thanks to Garth Brooks, who enjoyed one of the most successful careers in popular music history, breaking records for both sales and concert attendance throughout the decade. The RIAA has certified his recordings at a combined 128 times platinum, denoting roughly 113 million U.S. shipments. Other artists that experienced success during this time included Clint Black, Sammy Kershaw, Aaron Tippin, Travis Tritt, Alan Jackson and the newly formed duo of Brooks and Dunn, George Strait, whose career began in the 1980s, also continued to have widespread success in this decade and beyond. Toby Keith began his career as a more pop-oriented country singer in the 1990s, evolving into an outlaw persona in the late 1990s with Pull My Chain and its follow-up, Unleashed. Topic. Success of female artists Female artists such as Reba McIntyre, Patti Loveless, Faith Hill, Martina McBride, Deanna Carter, Leanne Rimes, Mindy McCready, Lori Morgan, Shania Twain, and Mary Chapin Carpenter all released platinum-selling albums in the 1990s. The Dixie Chicks became one of the most popular country bands in the 1990s and early 2000s. Their 1998 debut album Wide Open Spaces went on to become certified 12x platinum while their 1999 album Fly went on to become 10x platinum. After their third album, Home, was released in 2003, the band made political news in part because of lead singer Natalie Maines's comments disparaging then-President George W. Bush while the band was overseas Maines stated that she and her bandmates were ashamed to be from the same state as Bush, who had just commenced the Iraq War a few days prior. The comments caused a rift between the band and the country music scene, and the band's fourth and most recent album, 2006's Taking the Long Way, took a more rock-oriented direction. The album was commercially successful overall but largely ignored among country audiences. After Taking the Long Way, the band broke up for a decade with two of its members continuing as the Courtyard Hounds before embarking on a reunion tour in 2016. Shania Twain became the best-selling female country artist of the decade. This was primarily due to the success of her breakthrough sophomore 1995 album, The Woman in Me, which was certified 12x platinum sold over 20 million copies worldwide and its follow-up, 1997's Come On Over, which was certified 20x platinum and sold over 40 million copies. The album became a major worldwide phenomenon and became one of the world's best-selling albums of 1998, 1999 and 2000. It also went on to become the best-selling country album of all time. Unlike the majority of her contemporaries, Twain enjoyed large international success that had been seen by very few country artists, before or after her. Critics have noted that Twain enjoyed much of her success due to breaking free of traditional country stereotypes and for incorporating elements of rock and pop into her music. 
In 2002, she released her successful fourth studio album, titled Up, which was certified 11x platinum and sold over 15 million copies worldwide. Twain has been credited with breaking international boundaries for country music, as well as inspiring many country artists to incorporate different genres into their music in order to attract a wider audience. She is also credited with changing the way in which many female country performers would market themselves, as unlike many before her she used fashion and her sex appeal to get rid of the stereotypical honky-tonk image the majority of country singers had in order to distinguish herself from many female country artists of the time. Topic. Line Dancing Revival In the early mid 1990s, country western music was influenced by the popularity of line dancing. This influence was so great that Chet Atkins was quoted as saying, The music has gotten pretty bad, I think. It's all that damn line dancing. By the end of the decade, however, at least one line dance choreographer complained that good country line dance music was no longer being released. In contrast, artists such as Don Williams and George Jones who had more or less had consistent chart success through the 1970s and 1980s suddenly had their fortunes fall rapidly around 1991 when the new chart rules took effect. Topic. Alt Country, Americana Country influences combined with punk rock and alternative rock to forge the cowpunk seen in Southern California during the 1980s, which included bands such as The Long Riders, Lone Justice and The Beat Farmers, as well as the established punk group X, whose music had begun to include country and rockabilly influences. Simultaneously, a generation of diverse country artists outside of California emerged that rejected the perceived cultural and musical conservatism associated with Nashville's mainstream country musicians in favor of more countercultural outlaw country and the folk singer-songwriter traditions of artists such as Woody Guthrie, Graham Parsons and Bob Dylan. Artists from outside California who were associated with early alternative country included singer-songwriters such as Lucinda Williams, Lyle Lovett and Steve Earle, the Nashville country rock band Jason and the Scorchers and the British post-punk band The Mekons. Earl, in particular, was noted for his popularity with both country and college rock audiences. He promoted his 1986 debut album Guitar Town with a tour that saw him open for both country singer Dwight Yoakam and alternative rock band The Replacements. Yoakam also cultivated a fanbase spanning multiple genres through his stripped-down honky-tonk-influenced sound, association with the cowpunk scene, and performances at Los Angeles punk rock clubs. These early styles had coalesced into a genre by the time the Illinois group Uncle Tupelo released their influential debut album No Depression in 1990. The album is widely credited as being the first alternative country album, and inspired the name of No Depression magazine, which exclusively covered the new genre. Following Uncle Tupelo's disbanding in 1994, its members formed two significant bands in genre, Wilco and Sun Volt. Although Wilco's sound had moved away from country and towards indie rock by the time they released their critically acclaimed album Yankee Hotel Foxtrot in 2002, they have continued to be an influence on later alt-country artists. Other acts who became prominent in the alt-country genre during the 1990s and 2000s included the Bottle Rockets, The Handsome Family, Blue Mountain, Robbie Folks, Blood Oranges, Bright Eyes, Drive by Truckers, Old 97s, Old Crow Medicine Show, Nickel Creek, Nico Case, and Whiskey Town, whose lead singer Ryan Adams later had a successful solo career. 
Alt Country, in various iterations overlapped with other genres, including Red Dirt Country Music, Cross Canadian Ragweed, Jam Bands, My Morning Jacket and the String Cheese Incident, and Indie Folk, The Avid Brothers. Despite the genre's growing popularity in the 1980s, 90s and 2000s, alternative country and neo-traditionalist artists saw minimal support from country radio in those decades, despite strong sales and critical acclaim for albums such as the soundtrack to the 2000 film Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? In 1987, the Beat Farmers gained airplay on country music stations with their song, Make It Last but the single was pulled from the format when station programmers decreed the band's music was too rock-oriented for their audience. However, some alt-country songs have been crossover hits to mainstream country radio in cover versions by established artists on the format. Lucinda Williams's Passionate Kisses was a hit for Mary Chapin Carpenter in 1993, Ryan Adams's When the Stars Go Blue was a hit for Tim McGraw in 2007, and Old Crow Medicine Show's Wagon Wheel was a hit for Darius Rucker in 2013. In the 2010s, the alt-country genre saw an increase in its critical and commercial popularity, owing to the success of artists such as The Civil Wars, Chris Stapleton, Sturgill Simpson, Jason Isbell, Lydia Loveless and Margot Price. In 2019, Casey Musgraves, a country artist who had gained a following with indie rock fans and music critics despite minimal airplay on country radio, won the Grammy Award for Album of the Year for her album Golden Hour. Topic sixth Generation 2000s present, The sixth generation of country music continued to be influenced by other genres such as pop, rock, and R&B. Richard Marx crossed over with his Days in Avalon album, which features five country songs and several singers and musicians. Alison Krauss sang background vocals to Marx's single Straight From My Heart. Also, Bon Jovi had a hit single, Who Says You Can't Go Home, with Jennifer Nettles of Sugarland. Kid Rock's collaboration with Sheryl Crow, Picture, was a major crossover hit in 2001 and began Kid Rock's transition from hard rock to a country rock hybrid that would later produce another major crossover hit, 2008's All Summer Long. Crow would also cross over into country with her hit Easy. Darius Rucker, frontman for the 1990s pop rock band Hootie and the Blowfish, began a country solo career in the late 2000s, one that to date has produced three albums and several hits on both the country charts and the Billboard Hot 100. Singer-songwriter Unknown Hinson became famous for his appearance in the Charlotte television show Wild, Wild, South, after which Hinson started his own band and toured in southern states. Other rock stars who featured a country song on their albums were Don Henley and Poison. Topic. Popular culture In 2005, country singer Carrie Underwood rose to fame as the winner of the fourth season of American Idol and has since become one of the most prominent recording artists of 2006 through 2016, with worldwide sales of more than 65 million records and seven Grammy Awards. With her first single, Inside Your Heaven, Underwood became the only solo country artist to have a number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in the 2000–2009 decade and also broke Billboard chart history as the first country music artist ever to debut at number one on the Hot 100. Underwood's debut album, Some Hearts, became the best-selling solo female debut album in country music history, the fastest-selling debut country album in the history of the SoundScan era and the best-selling country album of the last ten years, being ranked by Billboard as the number one country album of the 2000–2009 decade. 
She has also become the female country artist with the most number one hits on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart in the Nielsen Soundscan era present, having 14 no-ones and breaking her own Guinness Book record of 10. In 2007, Underwood won the Grammy Award for Best New Artist, becoming only the second country artist in history and the first in a decade to win it. She also made history by becoming the seventh woman to win Entertainer of the Year at the Academy of Country Music Awards, and the first woman in history to win the award twice, as well as twice consecutively. Time has listed Underwood as one of the 100 most influential people in the world. In 2016, Underwood topped the country airplay chart for the 15th time, becoming the female artist with most number ones on that chart. Carrie Underwood was one of several country stars produced by a television series in the 2000s. In addition to Underwood, American Idol launched the careers of Kelly Pickler, Josh Grayson, Bucky Covington, Christy Lee Cook, Danny Gokey, Lauren Elena and Scotty McCreary as well as that of occasional country singer Kelly Clarkson in the decade, and would continue to launch country careers in the 2010s. The series Nashville Star, while not nearly as successful as Idol, did manage to bring Miranda Lambert, Casey Musgraves and Chris Young to mainstream success, also launching the careers of lower-profile musicians such as Buddy Jewell, Sean Patrick McGraw, and Canadian musician George Canyon. Can You Duet? produced the duos Steel Magnolia and Joey Plus Rory. Teen sitcoms also have influenced modern country music. In 2008, actress Jeanette McCurdy, best known as the sidekick Sam on the teen sitcom iCarly, released her first single, So Close, following that with the single, Generation Love, in 2011. Another teen sitcom star, Miley Cyrus of Hannah Montana, also had a crossover hit in the late 2000s with The Climb and another with a duet with her father, Billy Ray Cyrus, with Ready, Set, Don't Go. Jana Kramer, an actress in the teen drama One Tree Hill, released a country album in 2012 that has produced two hit singles as of 2013. Actresses Hayden Panettiere and Connie Britton began recording country songs as part of their roles in the TV series Nashville. In 2010, the group Lady Antebellum won five Grammys, including the coveted Song of the Year and Record of the Year for Need You Now. A large number of duos and vocal groups emerged on the charts in the 2010s, many of which feature close harmony in the lead vocals. In addition to Lady Antebellum, groups such as Herrick, the Quabe Sisters Band, Little Big Town, the band Perry, Gloriana, Thompson Square, Eli Young Band, Zach Brown Band and British duo The Shires have emerged to occupy a large portion of the new country artists in the popular scene along with solo singers Casey Musgraves and Miranda Lambert. One of the most commercially successful country artists of the late 2000s and early 2010s has been singer-songwriter Taylor Swift. Swift first became widely known in 2006 when her debut single, Tim McGraw, was released when Swift was only 16. In 2006, Swift released her first studio album, Taylor Swift, which spent 275 weeks on Billboard 200, one of the longest runs of any album on that chart. In 2008, Taylor Swift released her second studio album, Fearless, which made her the second longest number one charted on Billboard 200 and the second best-selling album, just behind Adele's 21, within the past five years. At the 2010 Grammys, Taylor Swift was 20 and won Album of the Year for Fearless, which made her the youngest artist to win this award. Swift has received 10 Grammys already. Buoyed by her teen idol status among girls and a change in the methodology of compiling the Billboard charts to favor pop crossover songs, Swift's 2012 single, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together 
spent the most weeks at the top of Billboard's Hot 100 chart and Hot Country Songs chart of any song in nearly five decades. The song's long run at the top of the chart was somewhat controversial, as the song is largely a pop song without much country influence and its success on the charts driven by a change to the chart's criteria to include airplay on non-country radio stations, prompting disputes over what constitutes a country song. Many of Swift's later releases, such as album 1989 2014, Reputation 2017, and Lover 2019 were released solely to pop audiences. The September 11 attacks of 2001 and the economic recession helped move country music back into the spotlight. Many country artists, such as Alan Jackson with his ballad on terrorist attacks, Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning, wrote songs that celebrated the military, highlighted the gospel, and emphasized home and family values over wealth. Alt-country singer Ryan Adams' song, New York, New York, pays tribute to New York City, and its popular music video, which was shot four days before the attacks, shows Adams playing in front of the Manhattan skyline, along with several shots of the city. In contrast, more rock-oriented country singers took more direct aim at the attacks' perpetrators, Toby Keith's. The Angry American, courtesy of the Red, White and Blue, threatened to a boot in the posterior of the enemy, while Charlie Daniels's This Ain't No Rag, It's a Flag, promised to hunt the perpetrators down like a mad dog hound. These songs gained such recognition that it put country music back into popular culture. The influence of rock music in country has become more overt during the late 2000s and early 2010s as artists like Eric Church, Jason Aldean, and Brantley Gilbert have had success. Aaron Lewis, former frontman for the rock group Stained, had a moderately successful entry into country music in 2011 and 2012. In the 2010s, Bro Country a genre noted primarily for its themes on drinking and partying, girls, and pickup trucks became particularly popular. Notable artists associated with this genre are Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, Blake Shelton, and Florida Georgia Line whose song, Trues, became the best-selling country song of all time. Research in the mid-2010s suggested that about 45% of country's best-selling songs could be considered bro country, with the top two artists being Luke Bryan and Florida Georgia Line. Albums by bro country singers also sold very well. In 2013, Luke Bryan's Crash My Party was the third best selling of all albums in the U.S., with Florida Georgia Line's Here's to the Good Times at sixth, and Blake Shelton's Based on a True Story at ninth. It is also thought that the popularity of bro country helped country music to surpass classic rock as the most popular genre in America in 2012. The genre however as controversial as it has been criticized by other country musicians and commentators over its themes and depiction of women, opening up a divide between the older generation of country singers and the younger bro country singers that was described as civil war by musicians, critics, and journalists. In 2014, Maddie and Tay's Girl in a Country Song, addressing many of the controversial bro country themes, peaked at number one on the Billboard Country Airplay chart. Topic. Pop country In the mid to late 2010s, country music began to increasingly sound more like the pop style of music. Some modern artists that primarily or entirely produce country pop music include Marin Morris, Kelsey Ballerini, Kane Brown and Dan Plus Shea. With more simple and repetitive lyrics, more electronic-based instrumentation and experimentation with talk singing and rap, pop country pulled farther away from the traditional sounds of country music. However, some newer artists have thrived despite using a more traditional country sound, such as John Party, Riley Green and Luke Combs. Topic. 
Topic: International. Topic: Canada. Outside of the United States, Canada has the largest country music fan and artist base, something that is to be expected given the two countries' proximity and cultural parallels. Mainstream country music is culturally ingrained in the Prairie Provinces, the British Columbia Interior, Ontario, and in Atlantic Canada. Celtic traditional music developed in Atlantic Canada in the form of Scottish, Acadian and Irish folk music popular amongst Irish, French and Scottish immigrants to Canada's Atlantic provinces Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. Like the southern United States and Appalachia, all four regions are of heavy British Isles stock and rural. As such, the development of traditional music in the Maritimes somewhat mirrored the development of country music in the U.S. South and Appalachia. Country and Western music never really developed separately in Canada, however, after its introduction to Canada, following the spread of radio, it developed quite quickly out of the Atlantic Canadian traditional scene. While true Atlantic Canadian traditional music is very Celtic or sea shanty in nature, even today, the lines have often been blurred. Certain areas often are viewed as embracing one strain or the other more openly. For example, in Newfoundland the traditional music remains unique and Irish in nature, whereas traditional musicians in other parts of the region may play both genres interchangeably. Don Messer's Jubilee was a Halifax, Nova Scotia-based country, folk variety television show that was broadcast nationally from 1957 to 1969. In Canada it outperformed the Ed Sullivan Show broadcast from the United States and became the top-rated television show throughout much of the 1960s. Don Messer's Jubilee followed a consistent format throughout its years, beginning with a tune named, Goin' to the Barn Dance Tonight, followed by fiddle tunes by Messer, songs from some of his islanders, including singers Marg Osborne and Charlie Chamberlain, the featured guest performance, and a closing hymn. It ended with, Till We Meet Again. The guest performance slot gave national exposure to numerous Canadian folk musicians, including Stompin' Tom Connors and Catherine McKinnon. Some maritime country performers went on to further fame beyond Canada. Hank Snow, Wilf Carter also known as Montana Slim, and Anne Murray are the three most notable. The cancellation of the show by the public broadcaster in 1969 caused a nationwide protest, including the raising of questions in the Parliament of Canada. The Prairie Provinces, due to their western cowboy and agrarian nature, are the true heartland of Canadian country music. While the prairies never developed a traditional music culture anything like the Maritimes, the folk music of the prairies often reflected the cultural origins of the settlers, who were a mix of Scottish, Ukrainian, German and others. For these reasons polkas and western music were always popular in the region, and with the introduction of the radio, mainstream country music flourished. As the culture of the region is Western and frontier in nature, the specific genre of country and Western is more popular today in the prairies than in any other part of the country. No other area of the country embraces all aspects of the culture, from two-step dancing, to the cowboy dress, to rodeos, to the music itself, like the prairies do. The Atlantic provinces, on the other hand, produce far more traditional musicians, but they are not usually specifically country in nature, usually bordering more on the folk or Celtic genres. Many traditional country artists are present in eastern and western Canada. They make common use of fiddle and pedal steel guitar styles. Some notable Canadian country artists include Shania Twain, Anne Murray, K.D. Lang, 
Gordon Lightfoot, Buffy St. Marie, George Canyon, Blue Rodeo, Tommy Hunter, Rita McNeil, Stompin' Tom Connors, Stan Rogers, Ronnie Prophet, Carol Baker, The Rankin Family, Ian Tyson, Johnny Reed, Paul Brandt, Jason McCoy, George Fox, Carolyn Don Johnson, Hank Snow, Don Messer, Wilf Carter, Michelle Wright, Terry Clark, Prairie Oyster, Family Brown, Johnny Mooring, Marg Osborne, Lindsay L., Doc Walker, Emerson Drive, The Wilkinsons, Corb Lund and the Hurt and Albertans, Crystal Shawanda, Dean Brody, Shane Yellowbird, Gord Bamford, Chad Brownlee, The Road Hammers, Brett Kissel, Coulter Wall and The Higgins. Topic. Australia Australian country music has a long tradition. Influenced by American country music, it has developed a distinct style, shaped by British and Irish folk ballads and Australian bush balladeers like Henry Lawson and Banjo Patterson. Country instruments, including the guitar, banjo, fiddle and harmonica, create the distinctive sound of country music in Australia and accompany songs with strong storyline and memorable chorus. Folk songs sung in Australia between the 1780s and 1920s, based around such themes as the struggle against government tyranny, or the lives of bushrangers, swagmen, drovers, stockmen and shearers, continue to influence the genre. This strain of Australian country, with lyrics focusing on Australian subjects, is generally known as bush music, or bush band music. Waltzing Matilda, often regarded as Australia's unofficial national anthem, is a quintessential Australian country song, influenced more by British and Irish folk ballads than by American country and Western music. The lyrics were composed by the poet Banjo Patterson in 1895. Other popular songs from this tradition include The Wild Colonial Boy, Click Go the Shears. The Queensland Drover, and The Dying Stockman. Later themes which endure to the present include the experiences of war, of droughts and flooding rains, of aboriginality and of the railways and trucking routes which link Australia's vast distances. Pioneers of a more Americanized popular country music in Australia included Tex Morton, known as the father of Australian country music. In the 1930s, author Andrew Smith delivers a through research and engaged view of Tex Morton's life and his impact on the country music scene in Australia in the 1930s and 1940s. Other early stars included Buddy Williams, Shirley Thoms and Smokey Dawson. Buddy Williams (1918–1986) was the first Australian born to record country music in Australia in the late 1930s, and was the pioneer of a distinctly Australian style of country music called the bush ballad that others, such as Slim Dusty, would make popular in later years. During the Second World War, many of Buddy Williams' recording sessions were done whilst on leave from the army. At the end of the war, Williams would go on to operate some of the largest travelling tent rodeo shows Australia has ever seen. In 1952, Dawson began a radio show and went on to national stardom as a singing cowboy of radio, TV and film. Slim Dusty was known as the King of Australian Country Music and helped to popularise the Australian Bush Ballad. His successful career spanned almost six decades, and his 1957 hit, A Pub With No Beer, was the biggest selling record by an Australian to that time, and with over 7 million record sales in Australia he is the most successful artist in Australian musical history. Dusty recorded and released his 100th album in the year 2000 and was given the honor of singing Waltzing Matilda in the closing ceremony of the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. Dusty's wife Joy McKean penned several of his most popular songs. 
Chad Morgan, who began recording in the 1950s, has represented a vaudeville style of comic Australian country. Frank Ifield achieved considerable success in the early 1960s, especially in the UK singles charts, and Reg Lindsay was one of the first Australians to perform at Nashville's Grand Ole Opry in 1974. Eric Bogle's 1972 folk lament to the Gallipoli campaign, and the band played Waltzing Matilda, recalled the British and Irish origins of Australian folk country. Singer songwriter Paul Kelly, whose music style straddles folk, rock, and country, is often described as the poet laureate of Australian music. By the 1990s, country music had attained crossover success in the pop charts, with artists like James Blundell and James Rain singing, Way Out West, and country star Casey Chambers winning the ARIA Award for Best Female Artist in 2000, 2002 and 2004, tying with pop stars Wendy Matthews and Sia for the most wins in that category. Furthermore, Chambers has gone on to win nine ARIA Awards for Best Country Album and, in 2018, became the youngest artist to ever be inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame. The crossover influence of Australian country is also evident in the music of successful contemporary bands The Waifs and the John Butler Trio. Nick Cave has been heavily influenced by the country artist Johnny Cash. In 2000, Cash, covered Cave's The Mercy Seat on the album American 3, Solitary Man, seemingly repaying Cave for the compliment he paid by covering Cash's The Singer, originally The Folk Singer, on his Kicking Against the Pricks album. Subsequently, Cave cut a duet with Cash on a version of Hank Williams's I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. For Cash's American 4, The Man Comes Around album, 2002, popular contemporary performers of Australian country music include John Williamson, who wrote the iconic, True Blue, Lee Kernaghan, whose hits include, Boys from the Bush, and The Outback Club, Gina Jeffries, Forever Road and Sarah Storer. In the United States, Olivia Newton-John, Sherry A. Austin and Keith Urban have attained great success. During her time as a country singer in the 1970s, Newton-John became the first and to date only non-American winner of the Country Music Association Award for Female Vocalist of the Year, which many considered a controversial decision by the CMA. After starring in the rock and roll musical film Grease in 1978, Newton-John, mirroring the character she played in the film, shifted to pop music in the 1980s. Urban is arguably considered the most successful international Australian country star, winning nine CMA awards, including three male vocalist of the year wins and two wins of the CMA's top honour entertainer of the year. Country music has been a particularly popular form of musical expression among Indigenous Australians. Troy Kasser Daly is among Australia's successful contemporary Indigenous performers, and Kev Carmody and Archie Roach employ a combination of folk rock and country music to sing about Aboriginal rights issues. The Tamworth Country Music Festival began in 1973 and now attracts up to 100,000 visitors annually. Held in Tamworth, New South Wales country music capital of Australia, it celebrates the culture and heritage of Australian country music. During the festival the CMAA holds the Country Music Awards of Australia ceremony awarding the Golden Guitar Trophies. Other significant country music festivals include the Whittlesea Country Music Festival near Melbourne and the Mildura Country Music Festival for Independent performers during October, and the Canberra Country Music Festival held in the national capital during November. Country HQ showcases new talent on the rise in the country music scene down under. 
CMC, the Country Music Channel, a 24-hour music channel dedicated to non-stop country music, can be viewed on pay TV and features once a year the Golden Guitar Awards, CMAs and CCMAs alongside international shows such as the Wilkinsons, the Road Hammers, and country music across America. Topic: United Kingdom Country music has enjoyed mainstream exposure and success throughout the 60s and 70s in the United Kingdom. However, this somewhat diminished in the 90s and 2000s. Though, there have been exceptions such as Garth Brooks and Shania Twain in the 90s particularly the latter and Taylor Swift, Carrie Underwood, Lady Antebellum and the Dixie Chicks in the 2000s. Crossover hits in terms of singles and albums within the country genre are few and far between and have been since the 80s. There are some British country music acts and publications. Although radio stations devoted to country are among the most popular in other Anglophone nations, none of the top 10 most listened to stations in the UK are country stations, and national broadcaster BBC Radio does not offer a full-time country station BBC Radio 2 Country, a pop-up station, operated four days each year between 2015 and 2017. The BBC does offer a country show on BBC Radio 2 each week hosted by Bob Harris. UK country music is overseen by the British Country Music Association. The most successful British country music act of the 21st century are Ward Thomas and the Shires. In 2015, the Shires album Brave, became the first UK country act ever to chart in the top 10 of the UK albums chart and they became the first UK country act to receive an award from the American Country Music Association. In 2016, Ward Thomas then became the first UK country act to hit number one in the UK albums chart with their album Cartwheels. There is the C2C, Country to Country Festival held every year, and for many years there was a festival at Wembley Arena, which was broadcast on the BBC. The International Festivals of Country Music, promoted by Mervyn Kahn, held at the venue between 1969 and 1991. The shows were later taken into Europe, and featured such stars as Johnny Cash, Dolly Parton, Tammy Winnett, David Allen Coe, Emmylou Harris, Boxcar Willie, Johnny Russell and Jerry Lee Lewis. A handful of country musicians had even greater success in mainstream UK music than they did in the US, despite a certain amount of disdain from the music press. The UK's largest music festival Glastonbury has featured major US country acts in recent years, such as Kenny Rogers in 2013 and Dolly Parton in 2014. From within the UK, few country musicians achieved widespread mainstream success. Tom Jones, by this point near the end of his peak success as a pop singer, had a string of country hits in the late 1970s and early 1980s. The Bee Gees had some fleeting success in the genre, with one country hit as artists, Rest Your Love on Me, and a major hit as songwriters, Islands in the Stream. Barry Gibb, the band's usual lead singer and last surviving member, acknowledged that country music was a major influence on the band's style. Singer Engelbert Humperdinck, while charting only once in the U.S. country top 40 with After the Lovin', achieved widespread success on both the U.S. and U.K. pop charts with his faithful covers of Nashville country ballads such as Release Me. Am I That Easy to Forget? And There Goes My Everything. The songwriting tandem of Roger Cook and Roger Greenaway wrote a number of country hits. In addition to their widespread success in pop songwriting, Cook is notable for being the only Briton to be inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. 
Welsh singer Bonnie Tyler initially started her career making country albums and was even nominated for Top New Female Vocalist at the Academy of Country Music Awards before her huge crossover hit, Total Eclipse of the Heart, lead her towards more commercial pop and rock. In 2013, Tyler returned to her roots, blending the country elements of her early work with the rock of her successful material on her album Rocks and Honey which featured a duet with American country icon Vince Gill. Tyler subsequently announced that she was making a new country rock album in Nashville with John Carter Cash, son of country music legends Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash, slated for release in 2018. Other international country music Tom Rowland, from the Country Music Association International, explains country music's global popularity. In this respect, at least, country music listeners around the globe have something in common with those in the United States. In Germany, for instance, Rohrbach identifies three general groups that gravitate to the genre, people intrigued with the American cowboy icon, middle-aged fans who seek an alternative to harder rock music and younger listeners drawn to the pop-influenced sound that underscores many current country hits. One of the first Americans to perform country music abroad was George Hamilton IV. He was the first country musician to perform in the Soviet Union, he also toured in Australia and the Middle East. He was deemed the "...international ambassador of country music," for his contributions to the globalization of country music. Johnny Cash, Emmylou Harris, Keith Urban, and Dwight Yoakam have also made numerous international tours. The Country Music Association undertakes various initiatives to promote country music internationally. Topic: <inaudible> Latin America. Regional Mexican is Mexico's version of country music. It includes a number of different subgenres depending on where they originated and in what regions they are popular. One specific song style, the ranchera, found its origins in the Mexican countryside and was first popularized with mariachi, and has since also become popular with banda, norteño, duranguense and other regional Mexican styles. The corrido, a different song style with a similar history, is also performed in many different regional styles. Other song styles performed in regional Mexican music include ballads, cumbias, boleros, among others. American style country music is also popular in Mexico, but most prominently in the northern regions of the country, where a number of bands and solo artists perform the genre while singing in Spanish. It is known as country en español, country in Spanish, and most resembles neo-traditional country. Tejano, also known as Tex-Mex, in English, is popular in Spanish-speaking areas of the United States, particularly in and near Texas, and in northeastern areas of Mexico. In Brazil, a musical genre known as música sertaneja, a very popular genre of music in Brazil, is very similar to American country music, sharing the music's rich history of development in the countryside. In South America, on the last weekend of September, the yearly San Pedro Country Music Festival takes place in the town of San Pedro, Argentina. The festival features bands from different places of Argentina, as well as international artists from Brazil, Uruguay, Chile, Peru and the United States. Topic. Asia. In India, the Anglo-Indian community is well known for enjoying and performing country music. An annual concert festival called Blazing Guitars, held in Chennai, brings together Anglo-Indian musicians from all over the country, including some who have immigrated to places like Australia. 
The year 2003 brought home, grown Indian, Bobby Cash to the forefront of the country music culture in India when he became India's first international country music artist to chart singles in Australia. In Iran, country music has appeared in recent years. According to Melody Music magazine, the pioneer of country music in Iran is the English-speaking country music band Dream Rovers, whose founder, singer and songwriter is Irfan Rizayatbash Elf. The band was formed in 2007 in Tehran, and during this time they have been trying to introduce and popularize country music in Iran by releasing two studio albums and performing live at concerts, despite the difficulties that the Islamic regime in Iran makes for bands that are active in the Western music field. In Japan, electronic music producer and DJ Yasutaka Nakata started to create a country folk style of music for model and entertainer. Mito Natsumi. Mito's activities as a singer has yielded to her debut studio album, Natsumelo, in 2017. In the Philippines, country music has found their way into Cordilleran way of life, which often compares the Igorot lifestyle to that of American cowboys. Baguio City has a FM station that caters to country music, DZWR 99.9 .9 Country, which is part of the Catholic Media Network. Bombo Radio Baguio has a segment on its Sunday slot for Igorot, Ilocano and country music. Topic. Europe In Ireland, TG4 began a quest for Ireland's next country star called Glore Tire, translated as Country Voice. It is now in its sixth season and is one of TG Faw's most watched TV shows. Over the past ten years country and gospel recording artist James Kilburn has reached multi-platinum success with his mix of Christian and traditional country-influenced albums. James Kilburn like many other Irish artists are today working closer with Nashville. A recent success in the Irish arena has been Crystal Swing. In Sweden, Rednecks rose to stardom combining country music with electro-pop in the 1990s. In 1994, the group had a worldwide hit with their version of the traditional southern tune, Cotton Eye Joe. Artists popularizing more traditional country music in Sweden have been Anne Louise Hansen, Haas Andersson, Kiki Daniel Sun, Elizabeth Andreasen, and Jill Johnson. In Poland, an international country music festival, known as Picnic Country, has been organized in Maragowo in Masuria since 1983. There are more and more country music artists in France. Some of the most important are Leanne Edwards, Annabelle, Rocky Mountains, Tahiana, and Lily West. French rock and roll superstar Eddie Mitchell is also very inspired by Americana and country music. In the Netherlands there are many artists producing popular country and Americana music, which is mostly in the English language, as well as Dutch country and country-like music in Dutch language. The latter is mainly popular on the countrysides in the northern and eastern parts of the Netherlands and is less associated with his American brother, although it sounds sometimes very similar. Well-known popular artists mainly performing in English are Waylon, Danny Vera, Ilse Delang and the band Savannah. The most popular artist in Dutch is Henk Vanguard. Topic. Performers and shows Topic U.S. Cable Television 7 U.S. Cable TV networks are at least partly devoted to the genre. Country Music Television and CMT Music, both owned by Viacom, RFD TV, and the Cowboy Channel, owned by Rural Media Group, Great American Country, owned by Discovery, Inc., Heartland, owned by Lucan Communications, and the Country Network, owned by TCN Country, LLC. The first American country music video cable channel was the Nashville Network, launched in the early 1980s as a channel devoted to Southern culture. 
In 2000, after it and CMT fell under the same corporate ownership, the channel was stripped of its country format and rebranded as the National Network, then Spike, and finally Paramount Network. TNN was later revived from 2012 to 2013 after Jim Owens Entertainment, the company responsible for prominent TNN hosts Crook and Chase, acquired the trademark and licensed it to Lucan Communications. The channel renamed itself Heartland after Lucan was embroiled in an unrelated dispute that left the company bankrupt. Topic: Canadian Television. Only one television channel was dedicated to country music in Canada, CMT owned by Chorus Entertainment 90% and Viacom 10%. However, the lifting of strict genre licensing restrictions saw the network remove the last of its music programming at the end of August 2017 for a schedule of generic off-network family sitcoms, Kankum compliant lifestyle programming, and reality programming. In the past, the current day Cottage Life Network saw some country focus as Country Canada and later, CBC Country Canada before that network drifted into an alternate network for overflow CBC content as bold. Stingray Music continues to maintain several country music audio only channels on cable radio. In the past, country music had an extensive presence, especially on the Canadian national broadcaster, CBC Television. The show Don Messer's Jubilee significantly affected country music in Canada, for instance, it was the program that launched Anne Murray's career. Gordy Tapp's Country Hoedown and its successor, The Tommy Hunter Show, ran for a combined 36 years on the CBC, from 1956 to 1992. In its last nine years on air, the U.S. cable network TNN carried Hunter's Show. Topic. Australian cable television The only network dedicated to country music in Australia is the Country Music Channel owned by Foxtel. Topic UK Digital Television Two music channels are currently dedicated to country music in the United Kingdom, Spotlight TV, owned by Canis Media, and Total Country, owned by All Around the World Productions, which itself was previously a hip-hop, R&B, grime music channel named Channel U, Channel AKA and Massive R&B. Festivals equals equals see also